Good morning, all. This is our first week of virtual learning uh, or continuous learning. And we're going to review some of the geometry vocabulary that we learned before the break. So we thought we'd ease in by reviewing some vocabulary and some geometry. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. All right. So I have the, uh, the book pages pulled up and you might be wondering how to get to these pages. Um, so you can just go to your portal and you would click on Think Central. Uh, and once you get to Think Central, you'll get to something that looks something similar to this. I have more options, um, but you would click on the Student Edition eBook, okay? And then it gives you an option, you usually pick PDF. And then from here, you have your table of contents of the different parts of the book. So I went to module 13, and we're gonna start with lines, rays, and angles. Um, and then we're gonna go through some of our other vocabulary. Okay, so we're gonna start here with 13.1, um, with point, so, in the little picture box where you see me, uh, I'm going to be modeling how we can we can show the vocabulary and we can act it out. Um, so point, okay, and then a line. So lines is not a line segment, but a line that goes on forever. So take your hands and extend them out and make a line. And so your open hand, open palm is showing the arrows on either side. So this line that we are making. Um, this imaginary line, you can imagine it just going on forever out into space and yeah, out into the universe. All right, so we've made a line. Line segment though, we take our hands and we make them into line segments, points at the end, and we can extend it and then it's just one part of that line, okay? And you can see in the book, they've named all those lines and those line segments as well. So, and then we have a ray. A ray is a little different because it has one end point and it has one uh, open end. So think of the sun and the light is coming from the sun. So that is the origin point of light. So it is truly a ray. When they say a ray of light, it's truly a ray because it has a starting point at the sun. So you've got your starting point and you've got your arrow and it goes on forever. So that light that's coming from the sun just goes on for as far as we know, as long as we know forever. So like a ray. All right. And so, and then if we put two rays together, uh, oh, also, before I move on, we have some fantastic examples here in the book, and it also shows you how it is written. So we are going to do a geometry scavenger hunt later this week. I'm going to put some reference pages that have your vocabulary that'll look very similar, and it'll just be an easy way for you to check in uh, and check your vocabulary. So um, you can always come back to this video, or you can look at the reference pages if you want to remember. Um, anything specific. Okay, so but any case, going back to putting two rays together, two endpoints, and then, you know, two arrows that go on forever, we would make an angle, all right? And so an angle formed by two rays, and we can name it, and they have that little, the little bitty angle when they name it, and it can be named by its, um, its endpoints, okay? And we always remember that the uh, the vertex goes in the center, okay? Or we can name it by its vertex. And of course, you know, pizza is a great example of an angle. So we have right angles and straight angles, acute and obtuse. So do this with me. Let's make a right angle, okay? And then a straight angle, however you wanna make a straight angle. Um, an acute angle. Look at how cute it is. It's such an acute little angle and an obtuse angle, however you wanna do that. Okay, so make yourself an obtuse angle, acute angle, straight angle, right angle, okay? Way we can practice our vocabulary. Um, all right, so let's go on to lines. Okay, so then we have our lines and they can be configured in different ways. So any two lines that meet somewhere, doesn't matter how they meet, 
we say that they're intersecting lines. And so go ahead and take your arms and make some intersecting lines. Okay. Um, and then we have parallel lines. Parallel lines go on and on forever and they never touch. So if it's like this, not parallel because it will eventually touch. So those would be intersecting or they would, you know, at some point they would intersect. Um, perpendicular lines, they're very special and they make 90 degree, four 90 degree angles. Okay. So do it with me. Intersecting, parallel, perpendicular. Okay. Um, I think that's, yep, yeah, that's what we need here. So then after we talk about the lines and angles, if we close an angle with another line, we've made a triangle. Okay. So you can either categorize a triangle by its angles or by its sides. And so in fourth grade, we mostly talk about uh, categorizing them by their angles. And so if you have an acute angle, so go ahead and make an acute angle. So every angle in an acute angle is acute. Okay, three acute angles. So an acute, sorry, triangle. So it's an acute triangle. So an obtuse triangle has at least one obtuse angle. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of flatten this out a bit and make an obtuse triangle. Okay, acute triangle, obtuse triangle. Okay, cute, obtuse. Okay, and then we have the right triangle. So do your very best to make a right angle with your hand. Okay, and then we can have a right triangle, and it has, a right triangle must have at least one right angle. The other two are going to be acute, they're going to, because we talked about how if you take off all the angles of a triangle, they equal up. If you add all of those angles of the triangle together, they equal 180 degrees. Okay, so mathematically, if you have an obtuse or a right angle in your triangle, the other two angles have to be acute, have to, have to. All right. And then we talked about quadrilaterals. Okay, quadrilaterals are a little bit uh, more complicated because they've got another line. And so you can have um, a squares are very basic quadrilateral. So basically any shape at all, any polygon at all that has four sides, no matter how, how long each side is, no matter what angles you have, we would call that a quadrilateral. Okay, so any shape with four sides that, that touch our quadrilaterals. And so the very basic one that we know is a square and it's very specific though. It has to have uh, two pairs of parallel sides. So if we look at this, look at where my cursor is, we have one, we have these two sides are parallel to each other. And then these vertical sides are also parallel to each other. And notice that little symbol here, it's to show that every side is equal in length. And so a square has to have four sides of equal length, and they also must have four right angles, okay? And so that's what it has. So if you go over to a rectangle, it's very similar, except it only has to have two pairs of sides of equal length. So the horizontal sides are of equal length, and they're also parallel, which is also a criteria. And then the vertical sides are also of equal length, and they're also parallel and every angle is a 90 degree angle or a right angle, and so this would be a rectangle. So squares fit the criteria for a rectangle, so all squares are rectangles, but not every rectangle fits the criteria of a square, so not all rectangles are squares. All right, moving on to our rhombus, see my cursor there? A rhombus is kind of like a squished square, you just went point and you just kind of squished it, right? Um, so they have two pairs of parallel sides, so the vertical sides and then the horizontal, so, sorry, I said that wrong, the vertical sides and the horizontal sides um, are parallel and they're all of equal length. So that would make it a rhombus. We don't call it a diamond, we call it a rhombus. Um, and then a parallelogram is very similar except um, they have to have two pairs of sides of equal length instead of four equal length. So the horizontal, sides are um, equal length and they're also parallel. The vertical sides are of equal length and also parallel, so that would make it a parallelogram. So all rhombuses 
are parallelograms, but not all parallelograms are rhombuses. Okay, all rectangles are parallelograms, but not all parallelograms are rectangles. And squares um, fit all of the criteria except for trapezoid, um, but not all of these are squares. So squares are very special in that sense. Trapezoids, like that, um, that unique person, you know, that's a little bit different, and that's okay. They have one pair of parallel sides. They have to have one pair to be a trapezoid. Their angles, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of angles they have. They can have right angles. They can have acute or obtuse angles. But as long as they have uh, four sides and one pair of parallel sides, then you have a trapezoid. This is uh, the one that's shown here is the most common type of trapezoid um, that we recognize. But it's, um, but yeah, that's a trapezoid. All right. So we have gone over these. I, you, of course, you have access to the books. This quadrilateral page is on 13.4, which is on page 467. Um, I'm also going to be, I mentioned I'm going to be making a reference page. I will also include pictures of the notes that we took in class. So you can use those for your reference as well to show how we made some examples. Um, that might be helpful when you are doing your geometry scavenger hunt later this week. Um, reach out if you have any questions. Um, yeah, we'll be in touch.